Hello everyone, my name is Diego Perez, I'm a mechanical engineering student here at U of H. Today I'll be talking to you guys about the viability of battery electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles. But before we start, I want to give you guys a quick overview about what I'll be talking about today. Firstly, I'll be giving you guys some background information on the topic, followed by the scope, which is split into two criteria, the first one being the cost associated with these alternative fuel vehicles, as well as the current infrastructure in place to service the two. Then I'll be giving my recommendation as to which one of these alternative fuel vehicles will lead us into a more sustainable future, followed by references. So just as some quick background, climate change is actually one of the greatest challenges we face today, and I believe it is imperative for us to understand where these greenhouse gas emissions come from. So in this first uh, figure here, we actually have the greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S. Uh, uh, sectioned off by sector. So you can see here, uh, the transportation sector takes up about over a quarter of the total greenhouse gas emissions, and that's the one I want to focus on. So in this uh, secondary graph, we actually see the breakdown by source of these greenhouse gas emissions. You can see that light duty vehicles uh, actually are the major contributing factor for greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. These uh, light duty vehicles are the cars, trucks, sedans, minivans that we all use to commute back and forth from our home to work or home to school. And what does this mean? It means that a major way to fight climate change is by changing the way we drive. From your conventional gas powered internal combustion engine vehicle to something more sustainable like an alternative fuel vehicle. And the two alternative fuel vehicles I want to bring up today are the uh, battery electric vehicle as well as a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. So what, are the, what is the battery electric vehicle? It is a vehicle that is solely powered by a battery. And since it's solely powered by a battery, there are no tail, tail pop emissions, no uh, reliance on fossil fuels. This is below here is a Tesla Model 3, just to give you guys uh, an idea as to what a battery electric vehicle looks like compared to your typical gas powered vehicle. So what is a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle, or FCEV? It's a vehicle that is powered by a fuel cell using hydrogen, and the only byproducts of this are heat and water. So there are no tailpipe emissions, there are, and again, there is no reliance on fossil fuels. This is below here is a Toyota Marin, which is an FCEV vehicle. I believe this is the 2020 model. So let's go. This is a viability evaluation of, of FCEVs and BEVs. There are, there's two criteria, the first being the cost, split into three subsections. First being the maintenance and repair cost, which are the cost to keep the vehicle running out on the road, the capital cost, which are the cost to produce the vehicle, and the refueling cost. Second, secondly, we'll be talking about the infrastructure, which, are, which is split into two subsections. The first being the refueling time, takes to refuel the vehicle, of course. And sec the second is the availability of refueling stations here in the United States. So we're jumping into the cost uh, subsection, which uh, we're talking about maintenance and repair costs. So for the BEV, there's actually reduced number of moving parts in the vehicle itself, resulting in reduced temperature stress, which means that the maintenance and repair cost is typically lower. This is due to the fact that, that there is no internal combustion engine, there are no, there's not as much fluid moving around or metal-on-metal metal friction happening inside the vehicle. Uh, a drawback to the BEV is actually the weight of the batteries itself. The weight puts strain on the brake system as well as the tires, and it actually ups the, uh, the maintenance cost as well as reducing the range. So what about FCEVs? FCEVs also have reduced uh, have a reduced number of moving parts as well as reduced temperature stress due to the fact that they are also electric vehicles. And due to the fact that they have a limited time of mass production, their components are typically newer, newer components typically run you uh, more money if they break down or if they're just typical wear and tear on them. And as you can see in this figure below, the maintenance and repair cost for a BEV is significantly, significantly lower than the FCEVs. So the BEVs went in this regard. Capital costs. Capital costs, we talk about the cost of the uh, cost to produce, so we talk about the cost for these individual components. Just to give a brief description of some of these, the traction battery actually stores the electricity that the traction e-motor uses to drive the vehicle. This is for BEVs, of course. And FCEVs, the fuel cell is actually an assembly of individual electrodes that uses hydrogen and oxygen uh, to create electricity or to produce, it, to, to produce electricity. And of course, again, that, that goes on the traction e-motor. The e-motor uses that, that electricity to drive the vehicle. And the H2 storage, that's just a uh, place to store hydrogen in, for the fuel cell. And as we can see here, this is a table that's the summary of capital costs. And as we can see here, we actually covered some of these fuel cells, the battery packs, as well as hydrogen storage. And as we can see for, from 2010, the capital cost to produce an FCEV was nearly twice the amount as the BEV. And even, and even in the most optimistic of scenarios, in 2030, 
the cost to produce a BEV is actually still lower than a SEV, meaning that the BEV wins in this regard. The BEV is less costly to produce than the SEV. We talk about refueling costs. Well, refueling costs, we're going to get some more background information, so I want to include this key in the one class here for everyone watching. So as we can see here, uh, we're looking at the one kilogram of hydrogen is about the same amount of energy content as one gallon of gasoline. That same gallon of gasoline has the same, about the same energy content as 33.7 kilowatt hours. Why do we need that? Well, what we want to do is try to find the average cost to refuel a vehicle, right? So from empty to full, as well as the price per mile. So what do we need? We need the average fuel prices. These are uh, average fuel prices in 2020, so we can see all that. And what do we need? Uh, what do we need to do? So we need to convert that into GGE, which are gasoline gallon equivalents, to be able to compare them, uh, to be able to compare these to about the same uh, measure. And then from there, we actually still need the fuel economy and range. Here we actually have the fuel economy and range for different powertrains, but they're all mid-sized sedan, just to give us a baseline of something to repair to compare the two with. So since we have those two, and we have the price in GGE. We are also given the miles per gallon equivalent. We can actually do some quick math and find the average cost to fill up as well as price per mile. As we can see here, the average cost to fill up a BEV is about six dollars and seventy-five cents versus the sixty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents of the FCE. So, the BEV actually went out in that regard. If we look on the price per mile, uh, the price per mile for BEVs are a little bit less than four cents versus the about twenty cents per mile for the FCEVs. So. The BEVs also win that one, meaning that the BEVs have a lower refueling cost. So what about infrastructure, uh, refueling times? So for the BEV, these uh, refueling times actually vary because of the size of the battery pack as well as the charging speed. So you, you could be in the middle of like a highly dense metropolitan area and uh, recharge a battery from, from zero to full in about 30 to 40 minutes at a DC fast charging station versus if you're at home with no charge, it might take eight to 12 hours. So there's huge variability in between these two. And for the FCEVs, they actually take about the same amount of time as conventional uh, gas-powered internal combustion engine vehicles. So it's about three to five minutes. In this regard, I would say that the FCEV wins. So we'll be moving forward into the refueling stations. So in, a, in 2017, there was about 61,000 uh, public workplace as well as DC charging stations in the United States. So that's a huge amount. And in this next figure, I want to show you guys uh, what that actually looks like. So for each one of these green dots is actually a refueling station. As you can see here, it's spread all across the United States except for maybe some places in the Midwest. But there is a, a large amount of refueling stations. There's extremely available to uh, early adopters to be able to refuel. And it's also of note that you can refuel these vehicles at home or at work. So you could be at home uh, when you're sleeping, you just plug it into your outlet. Or if you're, at, if you're at work, you can just uh, plug it into one of these outside outlets and charge you there. So then we move, we'll be moving forward into the hydrogen refueling stations in the United States. In 2018, there was about 39, 39 uh, hydrogen refueling stations in the United States, and I want to show that by this graphic. We see that each of these little light blue dots is a hydrogen refueling station. As we can see, that there's mostly, they're mostly uh, concentrated in California itself, and in California, it's only about two cities, two or three. So, from my estimation, we can, we can conclude that the infrastructure in place to refuel battery electric vehicles is far stronger and more reliable than hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles. So they went in that regard. And this is a summary. We went over the uh, per cost to produce, maintain, and refuel. And the battery electric vehicles went out on all three of those sections. And then we also went into the infrastructure in place to service the two vehicles as, and battery electric vehicles also went out in that regard. So based on our findings, I would recommend BEVs to be the alternative fuel vehicle of choice to lead us into a more sustainable future. And in this next section are my references. And thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, have a good day.